Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at network policies with Kubernetes. Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at network policy on Kubernetes. Now, this is an interesting topic because it's not one that you see a lot of discussion around, but what network policy allows you to do is filter traffic based on its origin into a pod. And so this will allow you to add some additional security to your pods whenever they are deployed into Kubernetes. So when we look at Kubernetes, we're probably going to have something that looks like this. Of course, we have the cloud and we have our Kubernetes cluster already deployed and implicit in this is a bunch of virtual machines. And we have a front end pod that is typically running some kind of web app or some kind of service. And there's some kind of back end tier that could be a database, a back end service or something like that. And that web app is able to make connections into that back end tier by way of some protocol it could be TCP it could be a database protocol it could be anything like that and the ability to do that from that pod is what you want to be able to do but you don't want anybody else to be able to enter into that pod so what you would want to do is create a filter around that back end pod that only allows traffic from the front end pod back into that back end pod. And that is really what network policies are designed for is to prevent these kinds of scenarios. I don't want anybody from the cloud being able to get access to that back end pod. I simply just want that front end pod to come into that back end pod. Now to make this work, we need to apply some labels to our application so that we can use label selectors whenever we actually go to make these network deployments that are going to be using those policies that we create later in this demo. So what I've done is I've gone through the WordPress template that I used for uh, some previous demos and I added in labels and namespaces to this. So the main thing that I want to look at here is the label for the actual pod specification that I have inside of my application here. So if I come down here to my template for my deployment here, I've got this you know, WordPress deployment and this is my MySQL tier here. This is going to be deploying the database. I have labels right here on my template for my pod spec called tier MySQL and app WordPress. And also down here inside of my deployment for my WordPress site, I have similarly a label set for my tier front end and my app WordPress. So it's mostly this front end tier that I'm going to be using for my deployment that to filter traffic based on a front end and then my SQL for the back end. Everything else in this is pretty much the same as I had in some previous demos where I talked about secrets, where I've already I've already created a secret and I'm going to be taking advantage of this. So combining secrets with your network policies will give you a better security footprint whenever you're deploying apps such as WordPress onto Kubernetes. So I've switched over to my PowerShell command prompt here, and I want to deploy that WordPress template. So I've already created a template for it. So I'm going to use kubectl. Um, to create that. So I'm just going to do create dash F and I'm going to call it WordPress.yaml. And that's going to deploy my services, my volumes, as well as my pods into my uh, Kubernetes cluster. So I can do a kubectl uh, get pods. And I'm going to do a namespace here. And my namespace is called site. And this will list the pods that I'm creating here. So there you see my front end and my back end. Whenever these are created, I'm actually going to go ahead and create my WordPress instance here. And I'm going to, I'm going to do that first. And then I'm going to apply my policies to show you how they can block traffic. Okay, now it looks like my pods are deployed. So I'm going to go ahead and get the service that I need for these. That would be the external IP address for my pod here. And uh, it looks like there's my public IP address. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to grab a browser window and pull it over here. And let's just go ahead and run through the setup wizard for WordPress. So this is very easy to do. So I'm just going to call it my site and use my name and then just use a super secure password right there that everybody just loves. Confirm that. Use my email. I discourage search engines from using this. Doesn't mean they won't because I'm going to blow this away as soon as I'm done with this demo anyway. And once this is done, it's going to take me to the back end page here where I can use that password I just created to log in. 
And this is the WordPress admin panel, and I'm connected to the database. Currently, I have no network policies applied. So what I want to do is first apply a network policy that's going to block access from WordPress to the database. And if I do that, what I should expect this to do is give me some kind of connectivity to the database error. So let's go ahead and create a policy that does that. So I'm here in my text editor again, and I'm looking at the manifest file for my network policy here. Now for this particular manifest file, what I have here is a pod selector that is going to match for the one I want to apply this policy to. So in this case, I'm going to be selecting the back end tier, which is my MySQL database. So I'm basically saying pod selector match the labels where my app is WordPress and the tier is MySQL, which matches those labels that I applied whenever I created my manifest file for this particular app. And because I have no ingress set, this is basically telling Kubernetes block all traffic coming into this particular pod that I'm selecting here with these labels. In this case, I've only had one pod and there's just only a single instance of this MySQL database. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens when I do. So I can come back down here to my command prompt and I can then do a kubectl create dash F and then I can do a deny all on my database. So if I want to get a list of my things I have created, my policies I have created, I can do a get just like I would on pod. So I can get network policies and uh, policy, and then I can do a namespace site. And that will list the network policies I currently have applied here. And I say protect my name, my MySQL, and that is going to do a deny all against that. So let's go over to my uh, WordPress instance and see what, what, what I have going on here. So if I try to do a refresh on this page, it's probably going to sit there and spin. And then eventually it's going to time out and give me an error telling me it couldn't connect to the database. So there is the database error that I was expecting to get because I couldn't get access to that database because of that network policy I applied. So now to kind of reverse that, I want to create a policy that allows access from the WordPress front end into this database. So to do that, I can come back down here to my other uh, policy that I have in play here. And this one's slightly different. In this one, what I'm doing is I'm selecting that same tier there using my match labels. So I'm selecting that same pod to allow traffic in. But in this case, I'm saying ingress from, and then I'm doing another uh, namespace selector. I'm saying apply this to all namespaces. And then I'm gonna look for a WordPress front end that has an app name WordPress and a tier name front end. And those are the labels I applied to my existing WordPress app whenever I created it. So if I apply this one, it will essentially allow traffic from WordPress, the front end on WordPress into that back end on MySQL. So let's go ahead and apply this one down here. And I can do simply recycle this command and say, allow WP and create that policy. So with this one in play, I should be able to come back down here and refresh this and then all should be good now. I can now access my database from my front end tier. I'm not getting that database timeout error. So I've essentially allowed the traffic from that front end tier, but I blocked pretty much everything else from coming in. So between those two policies, I can secure my access to my back end database while also allowing it from a specific set of pods or a specific pod in this case to allow traffic in. So this is a very quick demo on how to use network policies, but it does aptly show you how you can use these to add some additional security to Kubernetes. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com, and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available, and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the One Mule, and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect Now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure-related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.